Hi, my name is Gary Richards, president of Servants for Jesus Christ, and thank you so much for taking this time to watch this short video on healing miracles. I'm going to share some healing miracles from underdeveloped countries that I've been on on mission trips, as well as developed countries, because some people say, well, how come we don't see as many miracles in developed countries as, as undeveloped countries? And sometimes the reason is the people in these underdeveloped countries have tremendous faith. In the areas I've been visited, sometimes there was no hospitals. So the people had to trust in Jesus. They had no other alternative. And uh, tremendous miracles I'm going to share. So I'm going to share quite a few different uh, testimonies that these are firsthand. These are ones that I have witnessed with my own eyes, talked with people one-on-one. -on -one. So you're getting this firsthand, not second, third, or fourth hand passed down. These are miracles happening today. Some people say, what? Miracles happening today? I thought only miracles happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ walked on the earth. No, Jesus Christ, when, when he left, he empowered the Holy Spirit to the disciples and all those followers that have embraced the Holy Spirit all down through the centuries. And today, the, the miracles happen the same way through faith in the name of Jesus and in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. You and I, as human beings, cannot heal anybody, but Jesus Christ is the true healer, the one that's everlasting at the right hand of the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, I just want to encourage you as we just about get into starting to talk about healing miracles. Maybe you're watching this and you're saying, I need a healing miracle in my body. Well, I want to let you know that Jesus loves you so much. God loves you so much. And he's why having you watch this video right now because he wants to heal you. God's will is to heal you. If you study this Bible, and you can get a Bible from a bookstore, borrow from a friend, read all about the ministry of Jesus Christ. It was a tremendous ministry, not just of telling people about salvation and eternal life in heaven, but also of healing, of deliverance, uh, you know, freedom from all the torments of the mind. Jesus healed all those that came to him. So I want to encourage you that if you come to Jesus with a repented heart, Jesus wants to heal you, and you can get your miracle today. Not through me, but by God. We'll have a prayer at the end, but I want you to understand a few of the things so that after you pray, you can study the scriptures and find out God's plan for your life and where these scriptures are in the Bible. In the Old Testament, Isaiah 53, verses 3, 4, and 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and it goes on to say, By his stripes we are healed. That was in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament in the Bible, that's the last part of the Bible, last quarter of the Bible. In 1 Peter 2.24, it says, By the stripes of Jesus we were healed. So the same scripture is repeated in the Old Testament and New Testament. And you might say, well, what does this stripes mean? And why did Isaiah say, the prophet Isaiah say that uh, he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. And, you know, it goes on to say, that Jesus actually in the New Testament goes on to say that Jesus bore our iniquities and our diseases so that we don't have to bear them. Now you find that in Matthew 8, 17. Also in Psalm verses 103, sorry, Psalm 103, verses 1, 2, and 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all thine iniquities, who heals all thy diseases. All means covers your case. So as we go into these testimonies I'm going to be sharing with you, the common thread through a lot of these is faith in the name of Jesus, pray in the name of Jesus, and then believe and stand on the scriptures so that later on down the road, if something tries to come back on you five years later and say, hey, I thought I got healed of this, well, then you need to keep on walking the Christian walk and pray again for that healing to continue or restore your body because you can get healed today but if you go back into the terrible stressful world or situations of stress and anxiety and and you hold all these cares onto your life then you wonder why you know you hardly can eat and you're all cramped up and and you know you you say well I thought I had my healing but I lost my healing well You've got to cast all your cares upon the Lord. You'll find that in 2 Peter 5, 7, or, or 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. 
So you can't be filled with this ease. Jesus wants you to be filled with his peace and to be delivered from all the torments of the mind. So we're going to share that. But the first one I want to share with, with you, the miracle, was in an underdeveloped country I was visiting. And our tour guide was bitten by a poisonous snake. And this was about 20 years before I met him. And I asked him, what did you do after you get bitten by the poisonous snake? He said, well, there was no hospitals. We were actually in a very remote area. There was no hospitals even that time I visited. So 20 years before that, he had no other answer. And he said, I prayed to Jesus and Jesus healed me. Just exactly the way you'll find in the book of Acts how the apostle Paul was bitten by a poisonous snake and God healed him. So if you're doing the work of God, please know that if an accident like that happens, then put your faith in God, especially if you're in an underdeveloped nation and you don't have any hospitals anywhere near you. Call upon the name of Jesus. Another miracle, now that man was our tour guide. He was probably around 40, between 40 and 50 years old. I'll try to give you some ages so that you know that God has no favorites from older people up to 70 plus or you know way up in the hundreds. God can heal you if you're two years old or just a baby born. Parents can pray for that baby. This next example I'm going to give you was an eight-year-old girl. She, she came up to us. Now this was an example of her faith. It wasn't our faith. I was a baby Christian at the time, still growing, learning how healing works. So it wasn't my faith that happened when we prayed for her. It was this eight-year-old girl's faith. And what happened was this eight-year-old girl, this was in a hot climate, so she was wearing shorts. Her shorts were down to about her knee, knees, and one knee was twice the size of the other knee. And she came up limping to us in a really terrible pain and limp. And she said, just lay hands on my knee and I will be healed in the name of Jesus. So we were kind of like, all right, do what she's asked us to do. You know, it wasn't like we had great faith. It was her faith. All she said was, just lay hands on me, and I will be healed. So we prayed for her, not really having a lot of faith in our own self, This is, you know, thinking, you know, we'll just pray, but we really didn't know what was going to happen. And right there before our eyes, whoosh, the knee went right down to normal size, and we watched her. I watched her with my own eyes walk off perfectly healed. All right, that reminds me of that story in the Bible of that woman who had the issue of blood for 12 years. And then she came and pressed through the crowd, through the, all the, the busyness to try to get to Jesus. And she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And, and the Bible says, For she said within herself, If I can touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I will be healed. And Jesus' response to this lady was, Go in faith. Your, uh, go, uh, is, it was something like, uh, your faith, my daughter, has made you well. You can look up at the exact wording of it, but what Jesus was really saying was her faith got the miracle because she believed in the power in the name of Jesus. So I want to encourage you that you know, one of the major parts about receiving is having childlike faith. Hebrews 11, 6, without faith it's impossible to please God. So don't have natural faith. Have supernatural faith that God is the God of the impossible. He created us, human beings. He gives us a heartbeat every second to beat. He gives us air to breathe. Surely he knows how to heal your body. So if you're watching right now, and as I'm praying, I'm praying, Lord, as these people are watching right now, let the Holy Spirit go into their bodies, all through the top of their head to the tip of their toe. Fill them with the peace of God. Fill them with the love of God. We rebuke all sickness, disease off their body right now. The Bible says our bodies are the temple of the living God. We rebuke in Jesus' name all cancer, all other diseases that are tormenting these people. And we specifically, we come against any torment of fear on the mind, anxiety. We rebuke it in Jesus' name. Set these people free that are watching right now in Jesus' name. Now, as I continue to give testimonies, I want you to continue to just breathe in God's healing. God is giving you the healing from heaven, all right? You're not getting it from me. I'm just praying. I, as I mentioned before, men and women were just human beings, all right? When the Holy Spirit comes on us to lay hands on, sometimes you see God's power move out through laying on of hands or whatever. But you can receive your healing right there where you are in your own place watching because you don't always have to have hands laid on you. God can just supernaturally come right into your place 
And that's what we're praying right now, that you receive as childlike faith and just say, Jesus, I receive. I need you. I'm desperate for you. And God will do that. Now let me share a couple more testimonies to encourage you because I've given you just a few. And uh, on this mission trip, we saw a man who had been in bed eight years, got out of bed, and he was healed. I, I watched right before my eyes a boy who was born deaf. And I remember I was reading in the, in the Bible about another person that was deaf in the Bible. And Jesus stuck his fingers in the, in the man's ears and said, Ephapha, which I don't know what that means. Maybe it's a tongue word or maybe it's a... It's a Greek word. I don't know. It's, it's in the Bible. So I just said, I did exactly what Jesus did. The, the six-year-old boy came up. Uh, he was totally deaf. Both ears were deaf. Talked with his mother. And uh, so I just said, I kind of said, Lord, I, I'm just, I need your help here to do this. I did exactly what Jesus did in the Bible. I stuck my fingers in both this boy's ears, and I said the word, Ephapha, be healed in Jesus' name. And when I took my ears out, the boy freaked out, and I kind of went like that, and one ear went like that, and he, he just responded tremendously, things he didn't do before, and then confirmed the miracle again with his mother. So a thrilling, you could see the genuineness on his face, that that was a true miracle. You know, some people are skeptics and say, oh, well, that was a, a planned thing. Not in an undeveloped country, and you can see the truth through people's eyes if they're trying to pull a scam or if they're trying to... Uh, you know, if they're just really expressing the true thankfulness of God. Or in his case, it was just new awareness of sounds that he's never heard before because he's born deaf, and now at the age of six years, he's hearing sounds for the first time in his life. So it was a little bit, uh, you know, strange to him, but he'll get used to that and, and praise God the rest of his life. It's funny because I just came back after that undeveloped nation and came back to a, in America to a, a, a Christian conference and I would li like to say that it was a Christian conference full of faith, but unfortunately it was a Christian conference that was, uh, it was it had some level of faith, but not the level of faith that, that these people had that I had just been visiting, because the North American Christians, sometimes they, they put a ceiling on their faith. They say, well, I've grown enough. I don't want to grow any more in faith. And you've got to keep growing on your faith all the rest of your life. Keep growing. I mean, God says, believe in the impossible. All things are possible for those that believe. And they, it was a deaf boy about 12 years old there, and the father was there with the, this is in America now, and I said, you know, I just came back from this undeveloped country, and right in front of my eyes, a six-year-old boy was healed that had been born deaf. And as I spoke that to the father, the boy was 12 years old and had been going to a deaf school, so he was trying to lead, read lips a bit. And I, as I talked to the father, I said, is it okay for me to lay hands on the father and have you have a miracle for your 12-year-old your boy? And the father said, no, no, he's got a lot of friends. No, I don't want that. Isn't that a, sad to hear that? So I had to walk away. You know, I felt a little bit like Jesus felt at that time when the Bible says Jesus went into his own hometown and he, he didn't do any miracles there because of their unbelief. So unbelief stops God from operating. Now God is, he can do all things, but he chooses to only operate through faith. And if we operate in unbelief, then God says, okay, I'm not going to choose to operate healing through that situation because you're almost rejecting my promises and rejecting what Jesus Christ has done as he took the stripes on his back. And I've mentioned that word a couple of different times Stripes on his back, when Jesus Christ went to the cross 2,000 plus years ago, just before he went to the cross, they whipped him. The normal lashing at that time was 39 laps, or 39 lashes. And that was terrible pain because sometimes they used a, the Romans used a uh, cat of nine tails that had little sometimes bits of steel or sometimes bone chips at the end. So every whip would dig right into the person, usually the person's back, and cause bleeding. So that, Jesus said, that, that blood that was shed through the stripes is for our healing, your and my healing. So receive that by faith, all right? And a lot of this, everything I'm talking to you is by faith. You have to believe with childlike faith. Now let me share with you a couple more testimonies. And these are in developed countries. Right before my eyes, all right, I watched a lady who was born with polio 
And at the age of 42, she received healing in her arm. Her arm was skinny. Her hand was like a claw. And those three of us that went in from the Bible college, she lived in the projects in the poorer area of the t uh, poorer area of the city. And we came as part of the ministry to, to cheer up the neighborhood and pray for anybody that needed healing or whatever. And as we came and knocked on her door, she welcomed us in, those, those two other students with me, one, one lady from Africa. And this lady was sharing with uh, the person that asked us in about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. She said, have you ever received the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And the lady said, no, I haven't, but I would like to receive that now. So this African Bible college student prayed for this other lady. The two ladies prayed. And right there, God's tingling power went all through her. She started speaking in heavenly language, and her faith was so high, that was a time for us to say, well, would you like to receive, God, receive healing for your arm as well? And she said yes, and she was ready to receive right now because she knew that tingling power of God was all down here. We prayed, and she said it was like tingling power of electricity going all the way down her arm, the arm that had never been used in 42 years. And I said, go and do something you've never done before. Go and pick up something you've never done before. And she went and picked up before our eyes a potato. She went to the kitchen and came back holding a potato. And we were thrilled. Now her arm was still skinny, but her hand was now being healed by God. I'll share a little bit more about that. So anyways, we thank God for that miracle. We told her we'd come back and visit her sometime later. And I came back and visited her. Uh, with some Bible college students, this time with a camera, because we have some doubting Thomases out there, people that always are doubting, you know, and so I wanted to get a picture of this lady holding something in her arm that she's never done before. So anyways, we came back another time with some Bible college students, knocked on her door, she invited us back again and again, and I handed her a loaf of bread. This time we were out on the Bread of Life ministry, which was handing out bread to the poorer areas, to, to people that needed food. As I gave the loaf of bread to her, she grasped that in her hand. And I also said, now, you're picking up a potato. Yes, she's picking up a potato. So I got my camera out and took a picture of her holding that potato. And I showed it around to many other people. And she said something interesting between the different visits. She said she had a dream from God. And in that dream, she said that over time her arm would become bigger in flesh than the, uh, uh, to the same size as the other one. But she said God was doing the miracle that way slowly because she said if God has suddenly just made the flesh big and fat just like the other arm, then uh, everybody would have doubted and said, no, you never had polio, you're just pulling my leg. But because of the way God was doing it, maybe for the area that she lived in, maybe there was a lot of doubting Thomases, God did it this way so that God could get all the glory. God healed her hand, and God was slowly also healing her arm so that it eventually would become full use in all that area. After 42 years, healed of polio. One more uh, testimony I'll share with you before we close and go into prayer time. And then this is a, uh, a young girl that was born with cerebral policy. And if you know anything about that disease, it's impossible for them to, to run and jump and all that th stuff. Usually they're, they're confined almost to uh, a very paralyzed type state. And the girl, was her name was Heavenly, and she was, I think, around one or two years old when, when uh, this, this problem happened. Now, I talked with the mother, and at this time she was already healed. Some of the Bible college students from the year before had prayed with her and she had got the miracle for cerebral palsy. The little two-year-old was completely healed and the mother took the daughter and was on a lot of radio shows. So I didn't know this until I met with the mother. I said, oh, tell me all about the, the miracle. So she told me all the miracle. I happened to have the camera still with me. I said, I've got to take a picture of your little two-year-old daughter, three-year-old daughter by now jumping off the air uh, it's for all those Dunning Thomases that don't believe that God heals cerebral policy. And here I had the girls outside. She was playing, this little girl, about two or three years old, was playing with her friend, jumping around, having fun, as little girls do. I said, girls, jump as high as you can. Jump. And they were just jumping as high as they can. And I have a picture 
of this little girl heavenly about two or three inches off the ground jumping absolutely healed completely from cerebral palsy so I just want to encourage you that God does not have favorites what he's done for one he's done for he'll do for anybody all right but the consistent part of a lot of it is believe and keep believing don't let doubt come in because James chapter 1 says if you doubt you it basically says if you doubt you'll do without that talk James chapter 1 says if you're waffling or waving back and forth God's not going to bless you with anything because you're into unbelief so study the scriptures and get your childlike faith believing from your heart that God wants to heal you even you might say oh no no I've done something terrible I've done the worst sin in the world well Jesus is ready to forgive you and uh, your forgiveness is going to be cleansed all the condemnation of the past is going to be cleansed and this is a new day for you to start off brand new to become born again of the spirit that's why Jesus came to seek and save the lost and to heal those that were oppressed all right so as we pray I want you to don't disqualify yourself don't say oh I'm unworthy or oh you know I'm just I'm just not ready to come to yet Jesus I've got some bad habits to clean up you and I will never be able to clean up our bad habits by ourselves. that's why Jesus came give your bad habits give all your mess over to Jesus surrender every part of your life to Jesus and let Jesus come in and and fix up the problems in your life there is a repentance needed and that's a part that's important so I'm gonna lead you right now in prayer and I'm gonna pray again for all those that are watching right now for you to receive your healing and go over this video a second time maybe pausing it playing it pausing because it, I talked fast so that you can really understand a lot about these healing miracles all right so let's just pray right now Heavenly Father I pray for all the people right now that are watching and I pray that they Lord will receive a healing miracle into their body right now I pray that the tremendous love of Jesus will come upon them and right now restore their body rebuke all fear anxiety doubt unbelief off them in Jesus name father have mercy upon them and show your great power in their lives in Jesus name amen now I just I'm going to cl close with one other testimony and, and I also want to have one final prayer with you and this testimony is about how faith operates so that you can continue to stay healed after you we pray for you because a lot of people say well I was healed for five years but somehow I lost my healing we talked a little bit about that earlier about letting anxieties cares of this world and all those things get in and, and rob you of your healing but there's another element of healing which basically is, is you need to believe by faith and here is a perfect example of it there was a, a situation in a developed country a good friends of mine actually and they their friends were trying to have babies for years and had miscarriage after miscarriage to the point one time where they came over to my friend's house and they just devastated because yet another miscarriage and they had almost ready to give up but my friend who actually is in woodworking it can make a lot of different projects uh, and different furniture and things like that out of wood he said you know what I'm gonna make a faith crib for you we're going to make a crib, a baby crib, and we're going to pray that God will fill that crib with a new baby from you, that God will give you, you and uh, both of you, a new baby, do a miracle on you. Now, they were devastated, and then the natural people would say, why bother? Don't spend the time. See, these are the people that operate too much from their head and not from faith down in their heart. They'd go in the natural and say, well, you know, don't spend time making a a cradle don't spend time I mean it's already shown that you know you've had five or seven miscarriages why it's already shown it's impossible for you to have don't believe in all that stuff don't get your hopes up see anybody who talks about like that is putting a, a wet cloth on your faith and it's basically trying to just put unbelief all over you alright you've got to go back to the scriptures and understand God is the author of all life right from the beginning Jesus says be fruitful and multiply he wants to give children to you parents who have been struggling but you gotta have to pray to God and operate in faith as in this example here this couple had almost given up but James my friend went ahead and built a faith crib took the time it was, took some time to make this beautiful wood crib that was gonna hold a baby and 
he finished his project and God came through and healed that couple. They had their own baby and the last thing I've heard when this video has been done is not only God bless them with one child, God bless them with two children and they're both around the age of 10 right now. So again, how did that operate? You have to believe before you see the results. See, so many people in, in developed nations operate too much of this sort of a sophisticated head knowledge that says, oh, I'm going to believe after I see the results. No, that's not faith at all. You don't need any faith to see something after the results are there. Faith in God, God's type of faith, has to believe before you see result, the results, as in this case. So as I'm praying for you, and we'll finish this final prayer, you have to believe before you see it. So let's just go, and this is the part where you need some repentance, and you're ready to say, God, I repent of anything I haven't been involved with that is not godly and God's gonna do that so this part I want you to repeat this prayer after me and as I pray it you repeat it and you're praying it to God okay you're not praying this to me you're praying to God say Heavenly Father Heavenly Father forgive me of all my sins forgive me of all my sins I repent and turn from all evil I renounce all evil I choose to forgive those who have hurt me by the power of Jesus Christ. I ask for the infilling of the Holy Spirit to flood me and give me purpose in life. I ask Jesus for your peace to come upon me and fill me with your love and your peace right now. I ask you, Jesus, to give me truth as I study the Holy Scriptures to find out that your will is to heal me and so I'm going to operate in that faith and believe it and talk about it and thank you for it and give you 100% of the glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for taking time to watch this short video. I showed you before the Holy Scriptures. This is how you build up your faith. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So read this Bible. Study it. Not just read it like a newspaper. Study it. Get your pen and paper out. Write notes. Pray to God every day as you study it for truth. And you'll build up your faith. And your faith will get so strong that the scriptures will almost be part of your right hand. Right hand because the Bible says in, in uh, John chapter 15, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it will be done for you. Another part in Colossians, Let the word of God dwell in you richly. So feed your faith, starve your doubts. God bless you. There's lots of other videos that you can watch on this website. We're praying for you. God bless you. Thank you again for taking time to watch this video.